What's going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome into the CHGO Bulls Podcast, presented to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download that app and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. A pick. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. My guys, Will the Goat Gottlieb, Will underscore Gottlieb, and Big Dave Bow, B A W L Sports, <laughs> hanging out as always. And with us today, very pleased to have him. If you listen to David I on our old platform, you might know him as someone who they consider a quote friend of the pot. He is an actor who you know as Matt Saris and QB1 for Friday Night Lights, the hit show. <laughs> Last fall, he starred in the hit Netflix horror series, Midnight Mass. This fall, he's starring. In something that looks deeply upsetting, it's the Criminal <laughs> Minds Evolution streaming on Paramount Plus drops November twenty fourth. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into Bulls Nation, the Evanston native and diehard Bulls fan, Zach Gilford. Zach, how are what you, buddy? Up? I'm good. It's so good to be back, or for the first time on y'all's. I got to tell you, honestly, when you guys left your old platform, I just kept listening to them, and it was like a couple of months ago. <laughs> And I never knew where you guys went. I was like, where'd they go? <laughs> and then uh, and then Pat or Hayes, one of them was like, you know, to quote Big Dave, his point guardsmanship. And I was like, ah, okay, so they're on the air somewhere. And so I get a go I had to go look at your Twitter and I was like, oh, now I listen to y'all. So it's a, it's a pleasure to be on here. As as someone who <laughs> claims to be such a, a dedicated listener of Locked On Bulls back in the day, you clearly did not miss our last couple episodes when we told everyone where we were going and where they you know you. I think I, I remember because I texted you. I was like, What? You're leaving? And you're like, I think I got I think I pouted for a couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> and just was like, I'm not listening, I don't care. F these guys. That's how we are sometimes. You know how we roll, Zach. No, I know. I just I knew I was gonna miss you. You know, it's like I'm gonna dump you before you can dump me. Right. That sort of thing. <laughs> but you dropped an early point guardsmanship that's, on the episode, so we're, we're this all is on true. Congrats. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that that that's yeah. what I tell myself about Connie Britton all the time too, Zach. Is you know I'm gonna break up with you before you can break up with me. Yeah. It's not working. I'm gonna break up before. Working. I'm gonna break up with you before you can even date me. <laughs> right. Before right. You can, before you can turn me down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, Zach, the last time we chatted, oh, it was man. like right around the same time last year, early in the season. I think oh, we had yeah. you on last October. So much has happened since then. Before we dive into this season, uh, just curious to get your thoughts on what it was like to watch a Bulls team that was watchable again. The arrival of DeMar DeRozan, <laughs> Caruso, all of those guys, and see the Bulls, the team that you've loved your whole life, get back to the playoffs. Oh, man, last season was a lot of fun, you know, and that whole, you know, DeRozan breaking or tying Wilt's record or whatever it was. And it was just fun. It was just so exciting to have a team that was fun to watch. Um, and, you know, it's such a bummer that Lonzo went out and everything happened and it just kind of got derailed. Those things happen, unfortunately. Um, but honestly, now I'm a little like, I, I get to, so I don't get to watch a lot of full games, unfortunately, because I have two young children and I have a job. And if I come home from my job and say, I'm going to watch basketball, my wife will say, well, you don't need to come home. Um, <laughs> you can stay wherever um anyway but like i'll pick up bits and pieces and luckily my son who's only two is obsessed with like he'll be like go bulls like he'll walk across and he'll just be like hoops go bulls um so he's, yeah he's all in uh but this season's been a little schizophrenic for me like i love the bench and we, i've heard you guys talk about it i feel like our bench is so strong i'm a little like shouldn't our starters be a little better <laughs> I mean, they're good, but I feel like the bench is always bailing them out a lot. And it's like confusing to me. I don't know. What do you guys think? That's me. Yeah, they, That's haven't, I'm at. they haven't figured it out yet. Like, I think it's too early uh, for them yet. Like, they're not whole yet. Like, I'm not worried. I don't want them to do what they did last year and just fizzle out, like, in the second half of the season. So it feels like they're just kind of treading water until they get to that point. Steady in the trajectory break. in the right yeah, direction. Yeah, correct. Correct. Yes. But what? But Zach, what was that like though? Like for your family to actually see you happy <laughs> talking about the Bulls? Because <laughs> it's been a minute. What was that like? I'm sure that was a new experience for them. They were like, "I like that dad. He's nice." <laughs> uh, I, no, I remember I, you know, like, times we had you on. You were telling me and my old pal Jordan 
about how you were doing some method acting. Your character was like oh, trapped okay. in a dungeon somewhere, and you were thinking about how pissed off you were that the bull <laughs> sucked so badly. No, I'll it's never like, forget. It was, the, it was no, but it was during the like OKC loss that we had, like where we gave up a twenty something point lead, and I was like, yeah, this is the feeling that this guy chained to it thing would have to <laughs> um but now i'm like i'm like sneaking my phone during bath time to watch <laughs> the bulls and like i caught a couple of those buzzer beaters last year and it's you know whereas before for so long i was like well i guess i'll just hang out with my kids <laughs> like that's better than watching basketball <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh wow no, i guess no, i'll no, raise these children right. <laughs> yeah. i hope i hope your wife and co-parenter does not watch this episode <laughs> She knows. She gets. I was about it. to say she probably knows, right? <laughs> she she knows. knows. She's hey, she's from Chicago too. So I think okay. actually you had mentioned that like someone pulled up a photo of me from a Bulls game, and I think she's next to me in the photo. But oh. that could be wrong because if it's another woman, then I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it Reese Witherspoon? <laughs> yeah, there was that time. <laughs> is it Taylor Swift? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, I, I think you're fair to point out that so far the Bulls bench uh, has looked better than the starting unit, maybe just because the Bulls are a deeper team than the average NBA team, that their second unit is outperforming others. Um, it, it's interesting, though, that it seems like Billy has sort of shifted from having DeMar play with those second units a lot, like last year, to now Zach being the one that, when he's healthy and able to play, not resting the knee, has been kind of running some of those second units. But the other big thing this season – that's new is two arrivals who I think Bulls fans and, and, you know, let us know your thoughts on their arrival, their signings, but Drummond and Dragic, who I think oh, the average Bulls fan, yeah, Dramagic, the <laughs> average Bulls fan saw those signings and were like, eh, kind of, kind of underwhelmed by them, but, but they've been massive. What have you thought of those contributions from those two in particular? I mean, it's been, I mean, it's been clutch. Like it's kind of part of what saved us. I, you know, I, I've always had this weird thing for Drummond. That sounds weird, but um, like I remember when he was in Detroit, and I was just like, "Who is this? like this guy puts up like twenty and ten every night?" And I don't understand why everybody hates him or thinks he's not good. Like you can't be not good and put up those numbers. It's just impossible. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what's happened. He went to Cleveland. He went to Brooklyn. He went to Philly. And now we got him. And I'm so glad. Like he seems to have embraced his role as coming off the bench, and he can, you know, to have him as your backup. And we saw it when he was in Philly. You know, when he was backing up Embiid, when they got rid of him, or traded him, it affected their team. And I feel so lucky to have him. And then the Gorn one, I was, I wasn't yay or nay on. I was a little like, oh, okay. But I mean, I think none of us imagined that he was going to be this dope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another guy that probably, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Will, please. I was just curious, like, you know, you talked specifically about those two, but like last summer, the off season, they did all this roster movement you bring in Lonzo you get Damar you yeah. get Caruso all these guys and then this summer just those two and this is something that we've kind of debated a lot but like you know in contrast to last summer they're bringing everybody in what was your what was your thought about like how you know, they the, claim the went? yeah well they claim consistency and I was all for it and it's not like we had a ton of cap space where we could go make some huge move and so I wasn't mad at it no it was not exciting but it's proven true. And I think the kind of crazy thing is, as I had mentioned, like I would have just expected our starters to just be a little more like world beaters, especially, you know, Pat working out with DeMar all off season and that, and Pat's starting to come along, which I'm super pumped about. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I mean, they clearly, I, I don't know, they're smarter than us. <laughs> like no one's paying me <laughs> any money to construct a basketball team. So anything I say is just like, cool. The guy with a cock hat has that opinion <laughs> <laughs> no but you're right but because they definitely would start get off to those just ridiculous starts and the bench would have to come bail them out every single time and which is wild to say but but it's the truth that's exactly how it would happen and i think just more recently it's it's kind of gotten better like in those first quarters like last game they had a really good first quarter actually in the last two they have, you know, pretty solid first quarter. Well, and I was – and you're right, And but I was watching – the beginning of the first quarter last night was trash. I mean, what did we go down? And I was watching it, and then my kids came in, so I couldn't really pay much attention. <laughs> and then I looked back, I was like, oh, we tied it? We took the lead? And I was like, man, I missed the fun part. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, they're did. figuring it out. <laughs> you were doing the fun part. You were doing the fun part. Okay, good, good. Yeah, no, my kids are the fun part. My kids are the yes, fun sir. part. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got you. <laughs> 
uh, uh, Adrian in the comments talking about how maybe it's the fact that the starting lineup has had to change a lot so far this season. Yeah. Zach coming in and out, uh, you know, uh, other guys being unavailable here and there as to maybe why the that starting unit has not really gelled quite yet and that the bench is performing better. Also uh, pointing out that, look, the, the Bulls have just had this brutal schedule out of the gate playing 12 games back to back. Yeah, back to back. Um, you know, they, they just finished a stretch last night of five games and seven nights. Zach, are, are at six and six and sixth place in the East, are they about where you thought they'd be through the first dozen games? Are think you know, a couple of games that they let slip? Are you disappointed? Uh, personally, cautiously optimistic, given the schedule and the guys who have been out that actually in the very competitive East, I'll take 500 for now. No, I agree. And there's only like, I forget what the standings are. There's only five teams above 500 or something in the East, but right. Yeah. I mean that Cleveland game was, I know Cleveland's really good, but yeah. that was, that was really disappointing. <laughs> I'm so bummed. I was like, Whoa. well, especially because it was the home opener, and you're expecting, you know, more from your team in a game like that. Yeah. So that one I would have liked to have back, and then um, I don't know the last Boston one. I wish we could have pulled off because we'd already beat them. So it was like I just wanted it to be like, yeah, we beat Boston twice. What? <laughs> just flex on them. How, what? how do you feel? How do you feel? <laughs> how do you feel about the rookie? Uh, it seems like everybody in Chicago is really embracing uh, Dalen Terry. Dalen, this kind of game. How do you feel about him? I mean, I love Dalen. The preseason was so fun. And um, I think we all were like, oh, look at this dude. And then, it, I mean, he's playing like two minutes a game or something now. Uh, but I love him. I love his character, like who he is and his energy that he brings. And I think he definitely is going to be, you know, he's the kind of he's the kind of guy I think Chicago embraces who's just, yeah. you know, what's that expression? Like hard hat, lunch pail, which yeah. seems like uh, I believe it's clear eyes full that. hearts is the expression. <laughs> he's, his eyes are clear. His heart is full. And he will not lose. <laughs> That's right. Was that your kind of game when you were playing, like the hard hat lunch pill? <laughs> First game, oh, yeah, no, back to. Yeah, I um, no, I have. I'm, I'm not a very skilled athlete, but I have a lot of effort. So like, there it is, right? I would, okay. I, yeah. I was, I was like a defensive stopper. I was like, if you took, I was like an Alex Caruso, um, mm. and in his offensive game is much better than mine was. Yeah. <laughs> So a lot of I would just get out there and like annoy people. No, no fouls, no fouls. No fouls. I, was just, I, I would just run around and just annoy people. <laughs> that's good defense. Yeah, that's what good defense is called, annoying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Zach, I'm curious to get your take on the uh, the other Zach who is near and dear to our hearts here in Bulls Nation. That's, a, that's a great defensive player. <laughs> uh obviously Bulls fans have been kind of frustrated with Zach being in and out of the lineup so far with this what they're calling knee injury management resting on one of a you know a back-to-back -back set uh hasn't looked like the same explosive player that Bulls fans have known in a Bulls jersey for the last several years we're, we're trying to preach patience as much we can saying you know he took an entire offseason to rehab that injury instead of playing five on five he's working his way he's playing his way back into shape um wh what have you seen from zach so far and, and are you frustrated or are you willing to give whatever this is he's going through a little bit more time i'm always willing to give someone time and patience and all that i'm not frustrated it's a bummer though you know it, i think we were all a little blindsided when you were playing the first game it was the first two or just yeah. the first one First two. Uh, yeah, you're just like, what have you been doing? <laughs> like, I mean, we went through this with Lonzo. Where we're like, you had surgery four years ago. How are you not <laughs> like ramping up basketball activity? <laughs> like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, you know, I, people get injured. They work really hard. They play really hard. But you want to see your players on the court, and it's and, and for us, I think we went through this last year. You know, you want to see the team that you think you're going to see on the t court on the court i'm not being very eloquent point being if, if your players are injured you're always going to be thinking like what could have been and i think last season is a bit of that when we lost lonzo i think we all thought i didn't think we really thought we were going to go to the finals but i think we expected a deeper run in the playoff yeah did you have yourself like a a real i guess meathead moment last season with how good the bulls <laughs> were in that first half of the season you just like we're beating everybody in the world Oh, I was pumped. And I still don't understand why um, Donovan wasn't the all-star coach at the all-star break. Weren't we, didn't, weren't we first in the East? Like, I don't understand we were, that works. We were tied with Miami, and they had the head-to-head -head tiebreaker against uh, us. So that's why it was Spo instead of D Billy Donovan. 
Gotcha. Um, I don't think I really had a meathead moment. I'm a pretty even kill guy, unfortunately. I think my wife thinks I'm a psychopath. I think that's how I got my my role in criminal minds. Criminal minds, like, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> like I've had therapists say to me, "You've got a good poker face. It's hard to know what you're feeling." <laughs> like, like right now, I have no idea what you're feeling, and I'm like, mm-hmm, 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 okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> pretty good uh, uh and i think growing up as a chicago sports guy post you know the jordan era mm-hmm. and i for some reason was a northwestern fan growing up um i just am so used to losing that mm-hmm. i always say and this is for me when i when i do compete in anything i don't mind i don't care about losing but i hate sucking so mm-hmm. um that's kind of my thing like when you're just trashed that's really frustrating <laughs> but if you tried and you lost then you did your best See, I'm a good parent. That's what I tell my kid. <laughs> as I mean, as long as you avoid the Homer Simpson kids, you tried your best and you failed miserably. The lesson is never try. As long as it's something yeah. more optimistic than that, then you're doing fine. Yeah. Oh, but do you find yourself kind of maybe pushing your kid towards basketball, like playing the actual game? <laughs> no, I don't at all. However, when we came home from Canada last year, we had, you know, that classic Fisher Price plastic hoop that I had gotten from my daughter and she oh, had zero classic. interest in. Yeah. And he walked into our house for the first time. I mean, literally hadn't been in our house since he was six weeks old. And he goes, hoops, and grabbed the ball and dunked it. And I was like, yes. And then we would just, I would spend time, we'd spend like 20 minutes, I'd just call it slam dunk contest. He just would dunk the ball again and again and again. So I know he's into hoops. I can't wait till he's, I don't know how talented he'll be because he still like runs into walls. Um, so, <laughs> it's because he's trying to run through them, Zach. That's- <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you well, go. I think, so, I think the Bulls still have their 2036 first round pick. So boom. perfect. <laughs> boom. Yeah. Yeah. If, if Felicio and Denzel can throw on Bulls jerseys, yeah, there's exactly. hope for your son, Zach. There's hope. Yes. This is true. This is true. Exactly. That feisty defense his dad played and passed right there. <laughs> All I ever wanted in life was to be able to dunk, and it just never. Oh. I mean, do you remember back in the day? We're all around the same age. Do you remember the strength shoes? That it oh was yeah, like a shoe? I remember those. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I got those. Oh, yeah, I, I did the, the, the training. I was like, I'm gonna be able to dunk. It never happened. I'm still bummed about it, but I, I hope I can dunk vicariously through my son someday. <laughs> <laughs> Or just, you know, go to town on that Fisher Price hoop. I'm sure you can dunk on that oh, one. You know? Oh, I've destroyed I, that thing. <laughs> I, I got my nieces one. We were playing with it all summer. I felt like such a badass. Just like I would help them dunk, and then it would be like, okay, Uncle Matt's turn, and I would just throw down nasty. Dunk. We went, we went, actually, for my birthday, we went, we rented a house with a pool, and um, we're in the pool, and I had like a little like pool hoop. <laughs> it's just Michael Jordan <laughs> all over that thing, and like <laughs> blocking the kids' shots. I'm just like, not in my house. Like, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. See, Zach, yours is different though because uh, you know Matt is like six four, so it's a little <laughs> different from you taking that. You know, saying over you or Will, like that's a little bit different, man. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> When we were doing that photo shoot with Io, I felt really bad about myself because I was like, dude, we are the exact same height. And uh, yeah, I can't. I, want, I wanted to ask you guys, how cool is that to have Io like involved and get to like talk with him? I mean, he's, I'm so team Io. He's so dope. I love him. And, you know, he's a Chicago K, but just like the way he plays the game, I love. I, I would be athletes are the only people I like fan boy out on. Mm, so yeah. I would, I would not, I probably would have been like the weirdest, most awkward person. How was it for you guys? Yeah. Oh, I fanboyed <laughs> hard. And it's really funny because then you realize when you meet him, you're like, oh, this is like a 21, 22 year old young <laughs> man. Like, you know, right. I, not, not to call him a kid because he is a young man, but I'm like, I am 15 years older than you. And I'm staring at you like, hi, you're Io. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And yeah, you know, I, I was so unassuming and humble and quiet yeah. and like uh, it's just so silly. But Will, but Will think, actually I, knows because Will, you know, speaks to him more often than we do. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think I think the really cool part is like he is so quiet and reserved. But now you know, and hopefully soon here we're gonna have him on the podcast and you know be hanging out with him a little bit more. But like the opportunity for him to get to show his personality off a little bit, I think this is a platform that's really conducive to him. Like just being a person and like 
getting to show that side of him. He's he's mentioned a couple of times that he's interested in like doing media and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to get to know him a little bit better on a personal level and just like show our fans, show his fans who he is. Because I mean, you're totally right. Like he's he's a Chicago guy. He's uh, a big part of the Bulls' future, but also just like that representing the team from that standpoint is really cool. And I think people want to get to know. Him. Yeah. And I think it's so cool. It's gotta be cool for him because like you said, as like a young 21 year old, I mean, it, this stuff, I mean, it's one thing they're athletes they've been doing their whole life, but then to be on the stage and have to play the game. But the other aspect that they probably have not had to do so much is media and like talk to people. But I feel like it would be such a cool opportunity for him to be have this place. He goes, it's kind of home where he can, learn the skill and be himself and let people get to know him. And then that will only benefit him going off into other, you know, uh, venues or whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's my two cents on IO and the media. <laughs> it's, it's been cool. Uh, I, I'll, I mean, I want to talk about what you have thought from IO on the floor as well. So we'll, we'll do that coming up next more bulls talk. Plus uh, we got to hear what Zach's going on. I uh, got going on. Cause he's got some cool shit going on y'all. Uh, we will do that coming up next, but it's, it's Zach's favorite time, y'all. It's ad break time. I'm sorry to say we no longer represent Bill Bar, Zach. We would have loved right, to What the, the heck? <laughs> he never got oh, me, though. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> no. I will tell you, I don't know if you're doing an ad read. I know you do sometimes, but because oh, of yeah, y'all and former platform, I do do Athletic Greens, and they, they're good. They're good. Yes, Keep it regular. No. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Big Dave, today's episode also brought to our our wonderful Bulls fans by ComEd, right? That's a a something that Zach knows as a Chicago native. That's right. We stepped up a little bit, Zach. The (laughs) ComEd Energy Efficiency Program, baby, is committed to helping families and businesses and communities we serve that save money and energy. ComEd offers free facility assessments that can help Find energy saving opportunities, whether it's lighting, HVAC systems, which Max Peck knows very well, commercial kitchen equipment, or industrial processes. An authorized engineer will work with you to develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and your needs. These can be done in person or virtually and last approximately about two hours, so they won't take a long time with you. In and out within three to four weeks. Customers will receive a report detailing energy efficiency projects that they can start working on immediately. Each recommendation will include estimated energy savings, cost savings, projected costs, potential incentives, and simple payback. I don't know why, Will, but this sounds like this is right up your alley and something that you will be down for, my friend. Like I said, I just uh, I just signed a lease, so I got to get comment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm literally yes, sir. calling them after this show. <laughs> Well, be like Will and don't wait and get started saving money <laughs> and energy today. You like that was that? That was pretty good. That was pretty good. I like that. <laughs> for, I gotta say, is this, is this a new sponsor? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> for energy saving tips and to schedule your free facility assessment, go to comed.com slash powering biz. Because if you're ready to sign up, or you can just call them 855 433 2700 during normal business hours. Don't call after hours like I would probably do. <laughs> I like to hear like the be- I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. I like to hear the beginning before before you really have it in your bones. Like and I know where you throw a little sauce, you're like I know how to do the slash, I know how to do this, but you're finding your you're finding it. You're finding it. I can't wait to hear this ad in like 2 weeks. <laughs> right. I mean, it's he's just got to work on it just like you worked on your Bill Bar read because you listened to that many episodes. Of our- For those of you who are seeing this as Zach's first appearance with us here at ZHGO, we had him on, uh, I believe, three times on Locked on Bulls, and he listened to us read about Bill Bar so many times that the oh. last appearance he made, he said, hey, can I do a Bill Bar ad read for you guys? <laughs> and glorious. we didn't even send him the ad copy for it. He just went on a 90-second monologue about <laughs> Bill Bars just from what he remembered. And I'll tell you this, the they, they still haven't <laughs> sent me any. They haven't sent me any. That's so crazy. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what? Zach can't get no Sorry, Bill Bar. I can't get a, well, can I, you know what? Can I get a Bill Bar? Can I get a Bill Bar? Don't need Bill Bars. We got Athletic Greens and, and Green oh, Farm go. sausages. That's all we Ooh, need. There you go. <laughs> Today's episode also brought to you guys by our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. NBA fans, basketball is back. 
So tip off the season with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official betting partner of the NBA and our official betting partner at CHGO. New customers can make any $5 money line bet on an NBA game and get $200 in free bets if your team wins. And check this out. In addition to those money line bets, everyone can boost their winnings up to 100% with the DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. With bigger payouts than ever, DraftKings Sportsbook is where I go to bet on the NBA. So go to the DraftKings app, Sportsbook app, opt in and place a stepped up same game parlay today and don't forget that promo code when you sign up it's chgo to take advantage mm. of their amazing five dollar money line bet to cash Ew. out two hundred dollars in free bets uh zach are, are you a are you a sports betting guy now that it's sort of ramping up in popularity and it's been like kind of like legalized everybody's got their sports gambling app no i uh <laughs> I am so cheap. I'm like, I'm not going to, I know I could win money, but I'm not going to waste $2. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm like so scared of losing money. I work hard for it and I want to spend it on, on, you know, not chance. I want to spend it. On, I want to spend it on athletic greens. Yeah. <laughs> Fisher Price regular. basketball hoops. <laughs> and, and Price cock, and cock hats. <laughs> yeah. Cock hats. I got to get my cock hat on. Um, yeah, no, uh, I don't gamble. I just because I'm like, I, yeah, I, I wish I, I actually wish I did. I just don't. Oh, man. no, they got I me in gambling. Oh, exactly. no, they got me. In, they got me in, but no, when I went, when we went to Vegas, because I'm not a big uh, gambler at all, but when we went Vegas, to Vegas, Vegas Dave is a different beast. <laughs> I see whenever I, whenever I've gone to Vegas, I'm like, I take out, I'm like, I'll take $300 or whatever, something where I'm like, if I lose this money, it's not going to affect my life in any way. Right, um, right. And I play the five dollar table or the two dollar tables. I'm like, yes. it's fun just to do it, and there's free drinks that I'm into. Well, he said that. That's a thing. Yes, that's a thing. You know, you go to. Um, Don't get a Miller Lite. Yeah. No, but, but <laughs> no. We, we got we got Dave hooked on roulette, and then we just spent like f- like three nights in Vegas just playing roulette with Bulls jersey numbers. You know, twenty three, yeah. thirty three, ninety one. <laughs> no, I like Zach, that. As, soon, as soon as I figured out. You know, it wasn't about numbers, but more about just feelings and vibes. I was on. It was it was in after that. I started getting that money after that, Zach. It was like, oh, okay, I can do this. <laughs> I can do this right here. Uh, so, so Zach, you mentioned uh, Lonzo and waiting on Lonzo's return earlier in our conversation. Bulls fans have is recently, with the way Io has shown maturity and his ability ability to handle this role of this team's starting point guard, have started to wonder. When, assuming he does come back and is available to play before this season is up, does it make sense to keep Lonzo in that starting er, spot? Or should Billy say, hey, Io's won this job at this point. Others say just go small and start both of them. Where where do you fall on on that particular debate among Bulls fans right now? I mean, I feel a little like he's coming back from an injury. He hasn't played basketball in like a year or whatever it's been. I, I think it makes sense to just have him come off the bench for – and maybe it's two games. Maybe it's one just to get his legs. Conditioning is a thing. And, you know, I mean, I hope and I believe Lonzo's a team guy where, you know, it's not an ego – who cares? Like, I think he would realize I haven't played in this long. Like, I can come off the bench for a little bit. But mm-hmm. whatever yeah. wins games, I don't – I really – I don't care. I hope they don't care. No, I don't I mean, think you they see, do You see how Zach Levine is sort of – getting his his legs right getting his momentum right i feel like people are starting to learn that it's going to take a little time with lonzo too if he comes back well don't say if when i'm hope when. i'm hopeful i'm hopeful <laughs> but not positive we're, we're all saying we're all saying all-star break right now zach that's that's the goal that all break. of us yes. Want to oh, yes that's fine but just come come back come back <laughs> it's like just come back what if just you come, what if you what, what what did you like Sorry, about like, what did we do to you i just love it you know <laughs> I, you know i love like i know you said last night that he was your game of the night and i think he's just yes, he it's was. just that mentality like i mean he's a second round pick who's you know started most of his career in the nba for the chicago bulls his hometown team and he's stepped up to the plate he was second team all rookie i mean who knows what he's going to be this year i'm so annoyed that we only signed him to a two year contract cuz I'll tell you this. I don't even want to say it out loud, but I'm going to. I'm so worried he's going to price himself out and someone else is going to swoop in and say, we're going to pay him the way he should be paid. And we'll say, we, we didn't plan on this. Um, <laughs> you know? But 
I don't know. It's, it's just fun to watch. And there is that thing, you know, you have your hometown hero or hometown kid. I don't want to call him a kid. I don't want to be condescending, mm-hmm. but you know, we're both, you just know he, he, the bulls must mean so much to him mm-hmm. that it's, it's just like an X factor thing when he plays. Mm-hmm. That's true. Zach, last night, uh, I'm, I don't know if you saw, but Joakim Noah was at the game with Tony Kukoc <laughs> and uh, obviously, Matt is just like a massive Joakim Noah fan. I'm curious, do you have like a all time favorite bull? Oh, well, I mean, I think Matt and maybe Dave know this. I have a, I have a Scotty Pippen tattoo. This. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, we'll, I'll do the story briefly, but when I was 13 years old, it was the first year Jordan, the first time Jordan retired. And I was like, fuck Jordan, man, it's all about Pippen. I'm going to tattoo Pip 33 on my calf. And so I still have that tattoo to this day. And then I had a friend who worked for the Bulls and like would help me with tickets. And one time he came, I was at a game and he said, Hey, come here. I want, I want to introduce you to someone. And I was like, okay. And he takes me over to Scotty, who at that point was like a team ambassador. He's like, Hey, this is Zach. He's like, Oh, nice to meet you. Yada, yada. And he's like, yeah, his dog's name is Pippin. And he's like, Oh, okay, cool. And my wife is like, my wife goes, yeah. And it's a girl. And I'm like, it's a, it's a last name. It's unisex. It doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl. It's a last name. <laughs> and, then, and then what was the other one? Oh, and then um, and he's like, okay, okay. And then, and my friend goes, show him your tattoo. Show him your tattoo. Like they just put me on blast. And Scotty's like, okay, oh. nice to meet you. And I was like, no, but it was the year that Jordan retired. So like, you know, but you were carrying because remember, and like, we would have won the finals if it wasn't for that bullshit call against the Knicks. And and remember when you dunked on Ewing. Like, you're the best. And he's like, okay, I got to go. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying when I talk about, like, fanboying out on athletes. Like, that was the, oh, the most embarrassing moment of my life. <laughs> that you is hit him with the Chris story. Farley, like, re- remember when? Re- remember when? <laughs> yeah, remember? You remember, right? <laughs> you were there. You, uh, you were there. You were, you were there. I wasn't. Right. I was not. <laughs> as as someone who was drinking water out of an empty bullet bourbon handle the last time we were chatting, have you tried Scotty's new digits bourbon yet? You know, shockingly, I have not. I um, you know, I'm just a sucker for the bullet. I gotta order it. I'm just lazy. Um, you know, if it's not at my store where I normally get it, I don't even think about it. But I had, local I, Chicago Land uh, 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 Jewel Osco. <laughs> yeah, have you guys tried it? I have not no, tried it yet no, no. either. I haven't either, but I, maybe we should do a tasting, a live tasting. Like a yeah. thousand proofs. That's the reason I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> oh, is it? I'm gonna, oh, I like that. I'm going to track some down. I'll send you guys a bottle. Okay. Okay. That's the plan, deal. man. <laughs> deal. Put that down. Deal. Deal. Oh, ha- that gives me motivation to find it. <laughs> Are you? Have you been Have you been pleased, uh, Zach, with what uh, AK and Mark Eversley have done since their time here, or, or is there more that you want to see? Because I know you said you were upset, you know, that they didn't sign, you know, Io to that contract and he could be out of here because they have done that. So, how are your feelings on what they've done? I mean, that's one where hindsight's 2020, you know. I mean, Io's basically found money and you can't, mm-hmm. you know, really plan for that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they say Marco to it. Has he played? Like, what's he doing? Um, wow. They, they sent ridiculous. him down to Windy City, and then they brought him back when Drummond was out. But then even with Drummond out of the rotation, he still wasn't getting anywhere close to the rotation. Yeah. So they sent him back down to Windy City. Yeah, mm-hmm. that 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 it's, may have been a swing and a miss draft pick. Yeah, but either way, I mean, I think we all should be happy because they're competitive and they're fun to watch. So, you know, I mean, you can't always build a championship team right away. Hopefully we're working towards one. I do think we have some building blocks, mm-hmm. but you, you just never know. There's so many variables and – you know, we're dealing with the Lonzo injury and some people could say if he never really comes back, right. People could say, I mean, that would be a bad signing, but you know, I'm sure they did their homework and it seemed like his knee was fine. So, you know, they swung and hopefully they didn't miss. Hmm. It was just a foul ball. <laughs> the next... <laughs> Keep uh, off. Yeah. Before we move on, cause I also want to talk to you about what you got going on right now. Um, last bull's thought currently sit in that six seed in the East. We still got a long way to go. You know, we're about, an eighth of the way through the season, the Bulls are six and six. Do you do you find yourself feeling like you have greater expectations for this season compared to last because they did finally get back to the playoffs? Do you feel like your expectations are, well, if they avoid the plane and get back, even if they don't get out of the first round, I'd, I'd still be okay with that. You know, the East is really stacked and a lot of teams in the East made more aggressive moves than the Bulls did this offseason to get better. 
I think my expectations are I, I almost expect their record not to be as good, but for them to go further in the playoffs. Mm, I think, you know, and I think because like, like we're saying right now, like we're doing so much load management with Zach, we're six and six when I feel like we probably should be seven and five or eight and four. And there's just going to be a lot of uh, several games in this first chunk before Lonzo comes back that we're going to lose that, you know, the San Antonio game. That's the one that I feel like we should have won. Um, and so I think our record is going to be affected. It's going to affect our seating, but Ultimately, I think I think we'll at least get to the second round, maybe the ECF. Who knows? I, I'm optimistic about that. I like that <laughs> optimism. It's so good. I love it. I'll, I'll so always, <laughs> always will get appreciation for optimism from from Dave here. You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. Uh, all right. So Zach, when we chatted last October, you were um, you had just come off filming Netflix horror series Midnight Mass. Um, yeah which I watched it. It was great. Uh, it was creepy Thank as hell. You. Um, <laughs> you play, you know, spoiler alert for those who haven't watched it yet, but Mike, you play this guy with like this very haunted past, this dark past who then turns into like this weird cannibalistic, like demon thing. Um, now yeah. this current project, criminal minds evolution. Um, I watched the trailer. Joey, do we, do we have the trailer that we can show real quick for, for those of us, uh, tuning in because it's, it's yeah. messed up. I don't know if you're there, Joey or not. Um, <laughs> But it's like I don't want to give anything away. Well, no, they, they, you, like, know, you, you find it out. It seems in the first like you're episode. just doubling down on Midnight Mass, <laughs> and you're just like, I want to be the creepiest guy in all of my roles. Uh, yeah, no, it's fun. It's fun to be creepy. I, you know, I was like the nice guy for so long, and now it's like, oh, you get to be the bad guy. That's cool. Um, sorry, am I interrupt? Is this gonna play, or are we just? Yeah, Joey, nah. we play sorry. <laughs> when every child was in a deep deep sleep and the dark fiends had the world all to themselves you got 16 dead bodies in the buried shipping container victims from 2005 to 2020 this is 100 percent serial killer all my years as a profiler i studied killers but i never studied what a pandemic would do to them they couldn't move they couldn't hunt so they started communicating to become better predators. So the unsub gathered followers, followers that he's now activating. These aren't just connected cases. This is a serial killing network. The BAU is different. Where others see monsters, we see patterns. Where are we check in the time? This guy is in a textbook. <laughs> we need to get to the bottom of this. Maybe it's time we call our expert. We promised we wouldn't. I don't know who else could help. God, I hate how easy it is to pick this back up. Do you need my login or password? This is the biggest case we've ever had. Somebody is feeding you clues. He's been setting us up this whole time. And there's another theory we have to consider. There isn't enough time. This isn't your burden alone. Then you explain why we failed. No, it's not over. We're just getting started. Ooh. My favorite. Mm. My favorite part is. I'm the, terrified. The <laughs> I love that <laughs> someone kept going over to see how much longer is this. It's like the thing where you're showing your friend a video of your kids or someone. And you're like, <laughs> wait, I mean, how much longer is it? It's almost over. It's almost over. <laughs> it's a standard two-minute trailer. Okay, so um, I, I feel like I'm not making any wild uh, hypotheses here to suggest it looks like you play a serial killer in this show. <laughs> yeah, I'm the bad guy. Uh, what the family. hell, man? Congratulations. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Thank you. It's fun. No, but it's so cool. So, like, they're rebooting the show. It was on for 15 years on CBS, mm -hmm. and it was, like, 22 episodes a season. Every episode, there's a bad guy that they catch, usually. Um, but now it's moved to Paramount+, Plus, and it's only 10 episodes. It's, it's streaming, so it's, like, cable, and it's, like, one bad guy for the whole 10 episodes that they're trying to catch. I don't even know if they catch me yet. I'm constantly rooting for them not to because I've had such a good time on the show that I'm like, I want to keep coming back here and playing this crazy psycho guy. Um, yeah. But it's been great. And like, 
they got my they convinced my wife to play my wife on the show so we get to oh, like, awesome. go. it's so fun and we get to go to work together and it's so twisted because i'm this psycho serial killer and she thinks i'm just like a nice dad um <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little messed up but it's been great it's been great and uh yeah it's been fun it's made, given me such an appreciation for the show and uh yeah so that's kind of what's you going know- on thanksgiving but also more importantly which i also want to tell you guys about is i'm moving into your space I'm moving oh. into your space and oh. launching this Thursday. Do you think I'm we doing... weren't going to bring that up? I don't know. I don't know. We're going to make a grand entrance on that, sir. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. 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 <laughs> but I, I did, I I, did I, want to ask you. I was going to self segue. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did want to, because last time we I talked to you and you did uh, Midnight Mass, and I was like, you did Purge Midnight Mass. And I asked you, you know, why so angry? And now, you know, I see you, you know, you're being a serial killer now. Now you also did Midnight Club. You know, you got a few others yeah. coming up. So I have to ask, like, how's, how's Zachary doing? <laughs> <laughs> Zachary's good, man. Zachary's good. You get, see, this is the thing. You get all this out in Make Believe World, and mm-hmm. then you're just happy. You know, you're just okay. walking around. You're, you're enjoying your kids, as I do, as we've said. And yeah. <laughs> watching some basketball. <laughs> and it's great. Awesome, man. <laughs> I, I mean, like, you're not the first person yeah. in cinema and, and TV to play a serial killer. But as someone who used to dabble in the acting no, world, myself, I'm not. I've, <laughs> I've always been curious, like, for you, what was that process like as an actor to be like, okay, I need to get into the skin of and relate to mentally and emotionally someone who is as effed up in the head to be like, you know what I need to do today? So I need to go out and hunt people and kill them. Like what, how, how does an actor make that someone that you want to relate to every day? Well, you know, that's actually what's really cool. I think about the the new season of the show is that they mess though. You, you'll get a little messed with because you see he's, he's a family man. He's a normal guy. He loves his kids. You see him in his life being normal guy. But then you see these evil things he does. So I think the audience is going to be a little confused where they like feel for this guy at times. Um, but then they see him doing these horrific things. And they're like, oh, wait, he's the bad guy. But, oh, I feel so bad for him right now. His wife's mad at him. <laughs> like, he did his best. <laughs> Do you try to clean uh, up? <laughs> he, tried to, he tried to clean up. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I was just curious, like, do you like to consume this kind of content as much as you like to perform in it? Uh, is it cool so question. popular? Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place. I'm not like a horror guy. I know some people are just so into it and they love it. And I think it's an amazing genre. And I think I've been very lucky to work. The things I've been able, a lot of the things I've been able to do within the genre are, it's just such an umbrella of a term. But, you know, Mike Flanagan is an amazing filmmaker. He works in the horror genre, but I mean, he, cinematically and the stories he tells and the characters he creates, he's not just trying to scare people or show blood and, blood and guts. And I think this show, it's, it's really fun to be on it while they're rebooting themselves because they're excited to say, hey, it's season 16. We're not doing what we did for 15 years. We're going to do something else. And we know that people apparently really love serial killers. Um, so let's find a way, a new way to tell that story. Um, you know, being a part of the Purge franchise is so cool. That first one was a groundbreaking movie, the way they made it and mm-hmm. what it did and that concept, which is super twisted. Um, and now it's become a whole world. There's a TV show and 18,000 movies. Um, but it's cool to be a part of it. Um, so, yeah, I don't like seek it out, really. Like, I love it. Like, if it's good, it's good. That's what I always say. And um, but it's 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 fun to do. It's kind of fun to do. That's cool, man. I, I, good for I, good for you. I don't know how it's fun to do. You you clearly have to be in in and living that to understand how that's fun. Because wow, I it seems like so challenging. Well, to- I'll tell you this: it's fun because when you're doing it, it's so. I mean, it's so fake. Everything's fake. Mm-hmm. Everything's annoying. Everything takes forever. If there's blood involved, I'm in the worst mood in my life because it's just sticky and gross and it sucks. But then it looks you like walk- there's a fair amount of blood. Just, 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 a, just a fair amount to be yeah, that. Uh, yeah. um, but then when you see it and you're like, and you see the story come together and you see, you know, it, it always blows my mind. Sometimes you'll be, I spend a lot of time in a shipping container in the show and we'll be in there and it's super dark and dimly lit. And I'm like, can the camera see anything? And you look at what they're able to do with just like, you know, a lens and an aperture and how they make it. It just, it never, what you see on camera or on film or digital on screen 
is not ever what you're seeing with your eye in person. And it's really cool to kind of see mm. that transition. Be like, oh, I was in there. It looked like crap. And now it looks like creepy and eerie and like well lit. Um, so it's just, yeah. I, I, I love that. That's what I love about the business is it, the, the process of it and how everyone's thumbprint is on it. And it's, it's never what you're seeing on the day. And thank you editors. Cause they make me a better actor. Mm. I like that. So, I like uh, that. As, as you mentioned, Zach, you got something else going on. Um, you are diving into the world of hosting a podcast. <laughs> it took you long enough. You've yeah. only been listening well, been. to our, our Bulls podcast for years, what? making recurring appearances. It's about damn time. <laughs> there yeah. it is. There. Um, yeah, so that's what we're doing. Podcast. It's not we, uh... really football. Friday Night Lights and beyond. Tell us about this, Zach. Yeah, so like over a year ago, um, Scott Porter, Jason Street called me and goes, Hey Zach, I want to talk to you about something. I was like, Okay, sure, what's up? And he goes, I've got an opportunity for us. I was like, Oh, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> like a pyramid scheme? What are you, dude? <laughs> oh, come on, Scott. Like, you work, you work plenty. You're fine. And then, um, and he goes, I've been approached about doing a Friday Night Lights rewatch podcast. And I went, <laughs> like, I don't, like, I don't need to sit there and watch myself and talk about myself and blah, blah, blah. And then he was like, it, there's money there. And I was like, oh, money. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, money. But Scott, Not money. Not where the money's at, Zach. This is the future. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, you know, we talked about it and we were like, you know, it's going to be really boring to listen to like just two dudes sit around and talk about the show that they're in together. And Mae Whitman is like kind of branded herself as the Friday Night Lights super fan. And we both have been friends with her for a long time. We both worked with her on separate shows. And so we're like, oh, it'd be cool to have her on. It's kind of like the voice of the audience and, you know, and and the fan. And and she's got like over a million followers on Instagram. So that can't hurt. I was, gonna, I, was like, I, was, I was a little offended that you didn't ask me to play that role in your pod because well, right? you know yeah. how much of a diehard FNL fan I am, but I, I don't have a million Instagram followers. So we, you know, we didn't need another. That offended. We just didn't need another white dude. We needed something <laughs> else. <laughs> I, I would have, I definitely would have gone to Big Day before you. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, I'm good uh, too, but I'll I'll take that though. <laughs> I mean, sorry. I hope that wasn't offensive. Um, oh no! But anyway, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we asked May, and she was like, hundred percent yes." And you know, it's fun, and like a lot of it is, you know, it's like you guys listening to you guys. I mean, you do shows when there's no games, when there's no season, when there's nothing. People are coming to listen because they like listening to you guys, mm. your rapport, and the way you talk about things, and. Um, and that's kind of our hope is not to just sit down and like every episode be like, okay, it's episode one. Here's what happened. And blah, blah, blah. Like we kind of go off on tangents and we can tell the stories of when we did things. I mean, we recorded an episode yesterday and it was really fun. I got to put Scott Porter on blast for a time where he pooped himself in a <laughs> airport bathroom. And he was not happy that I made him tell this story on the podcast. Oh, um, and you know, I mean, you're going to have to tune in to listen, but, uh, you know, so it kind of goes there. <laughs> you know, I think the first 15 minutes of the episode is us talking about whether we pooped ourselves or not. I have not. Um, Congratulations. I'm proud of you. <laughs> thank, thank you. It's the Athletic Greens. It's the Athletic Greens. <laughs> yes. It's working. I'm, I'm it's glad working. you gra- gravitated to one of our sponsors. That's good. Next time you come on, you're doing the Athletic Greens read. Oh, I would love to. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, yeah, it's been super fun, and uh, we're launching – I think the trailer's out, whatever that means. It's probably like 30 seconds of us being like, hey, it's not only mm-hmm. football. Very nice and beyond. Yeah. Um, oh, but uh, oh. I dug that up too. Do you want me to play that trailer? Because we have oh. it. Let's is do it, it. Is it two minutes long or is no, it shorter? It's, it's like, no, you're right. It's like, it's like 30 seconds. Let's do it. Okay, Come I can on. do 30 seconds. Joey, Let's do it. Trailer. Come on now. Hey, and shout I out mean, to Mae Whitman, like you said. Like, I loved her in the Duff and Scott Pilgrim. Oh, she's, she's great. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Arrested Development? I mean, come on. Yes, absolutely. Oh, so the cool thing about our podcast is there's no sound. It's just <laughs> us talking. It's a video podcast without volume. <laughs> We're just trying to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> it's all good. It's basically us saying like, hey, I'm Scott. I'm Zach. I'm May. And this is it's mm-hmm. not only football. 
Um, but and, it's and fun. It's, so in that trailer, it seems like you guys are saying it's not just going to be a simple rewatch podcast, which is the very popular thing to do these days. With like, you know, these guys know I am diehard listening to every new episode of Pod Meets World right now because Boy Meets World was oh, like my show you know, when I was growing up. Oh, that's so funny. Danielle's a good friend of mine. And, what? Um, yeah. What? <laughs> You're friends with Topanga? <laughs> with Topanga? Bro. Yeah, Why'd you leave with that? <laughs> no, so I talked to her. Zachary, and... Come on now, man. <laughs> no, it's weird. I'll, I'll be honest. Like, it's it's kind of it's every now and then you're like, this is crazy. Um, but yeah, no, I talked to her a lot about I listened to theirs because I was like, how does this work? How do we do it? And ours is different than theirs. It, you know, I think they are a little. You know, they tend to like stick to the episode a lot. They do like a guest and then an episode and whatever. Right. They're but great, they're, they're but like, it is. They're, they started with like pilot season one, episode one, and they're talking through every episode and then also mixing in guests. Yeah. I mean, we are doing that. However, you know, and, and we, I'll, I'll be honest, we find our footing a little bit. The first episode is us talking about our casting process, how we all came together. And then we break the pilot episode into two podcast episodes and after, you know, I think at the beginning, to be honest, we're a little like, let's go through each scene. And then we're like, we don't need to talk about the scene that's a montage or whatever. And we should talk more about when we pooped ourselves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you got to give the people what they want. Like, no Obviously. one cares about the, every scene. They want to know about our bowel movements. They want um, that. So yeah. anyway. <laughs> Uh, Joey, can you put up that image for, for Zach's podcast back up just real quick? Because I, I have a question. Did you get permission from Kyle Chandler to tape <laughs> over his face oh. with Mae Whitman's face? Well, I don't, man, why are you bringing up permission? Because I don't even got permission to use this photo. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah. I do love, and this is what's so fun about the pod, is like May is so awesome and has no... Yeah. Um, she doesn't hold take herself seriously. Like she picked that photo. It was like, I think it'd be funny if you put this photo of me like this. You know, she wasn't like get a glam shot, get a whatever. I mean, you look yeah. you look wonderful, May. Don't get me wrong, but you know, she's like, oh, let's make it funny. Um, and she's yeah. awesome. And uh, you know, her and I we worked together for a while, and we just have this weird brotherly rivalry relationship, and we just give each other a lot of crap. And Scott's like the dad of the pod, and we're constantly like. Scott, shut up. <laughs> like, <stop. laughs> no one cares. <laughs> Yo, well, do you have do you do you have guests like specifically that you know that you want on the show? Yeah, so I mean we have we're gonna um tomorrow we're gonna sit down with Jason Kadams, who was the showrunner for the entirety of the series. Um we've talked to most of the cast is gonna come on, the original cast, but then there's also weird, not weird, but there's other real super fans who are super cool um people in the business or whatever who are obsessed with the show i know we're trying to get in touch with them but lin manuel is a huge friday Night lights fan to the mm. point where scott went to see hamilton in new york and like an usher came out i was like will you please stay in your seat after the show and he's like okay and then once the theater cleared out they brought him back to meet lin manuel and apparently lin was like clear eyes full hearts can't fucking lose and was like pumped and they were like Okay, maybe we can get. So it'd be so cool to have someone like Lynn yeah. and hear as like who he is in this world, what the show meant to him. Um, and there's a few other people, and I. Um, so I, we kind of want to do it that way, where it's not just like just the actors from the show, but talking to people in the industry because it, so many people have said like, oh, I want this to have like that Friday Night Lights look, or I want to like have the authenticity that that show did, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of hear how it affected them in their career that did not in, their career not including Friday Night Lights. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, we got some cool guests lined up. Really cool um, and it, it's fun. That's yeah, a great, it's uh, great spin on how to do one of those podcasts. I, I really like that idea. I'm excited to listen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, because the idea of just sitting around and watching the episode and talking about it to me was like it felt a little masturbatory. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with the actual <laughs> act. But if it's just like in self reflection, it's maybe. Yeah. Mm. Well, okay. I, I'm, I'm just going to say this. Uh, I, I am a huge Mae Whitman fan. I love a lot of things that she's done. I've mm -hmm. made my peace with the fact that she's the third wheel on this podcast. If she, if she is the super fan she claims to be, I'm just saying, if you guys ever want to test her FNL like knowledge, like her trivia oh. skills and details of every nook and cranny of that entire series, and you want a legit challenger to come up oh. against her, oh, you got my number. You we got will make my this freaking number. Oh, we will make this happen. Here's a big question for you. No, I'm not kidding. She would love this. But really? here's the big question. 
We, but do we do it after we've rewatched the show or like while we're in the middle of it? No, in the middle. In the yeah, middle. I agree with you. Middle. Okay. Yeah. Your call. Mm -hmm. I, I could use a refresher course, but I'm not, I'm not embarrassed to say to your face, Zach, I've watched that show from start to finish five times through. Woo, well, I got, I got thanks. mad deets up here. <laughs> I don't remember a lot from what I learned in school, but I can quote every <laughs> minute of every Friday Night Lights episode. All right. Oh, that's, that's better than me. I've never even finished it. <laughs> like, to be honest. Really? So, right. wow. <laughs> I was like, well, no. So like I've told this story a thousand times, but when my wife and I started dating, we were shooting the fifth season and she hadn't seen it. And people were all like, Oh my God, Friday, you've watched Friday, you're dating the guy from Friday Royce? Oh, it's so good. She's like, Yeah, I've never seen it. Like, you gotta watch, you gotta watch. And so finally, <laughs> she was like, All right, fine, fine. I'll try and watch this show. And um, she watched one episode and she was like, Hey, Zach, so I watched the pilot. And I was like, Oh, she's like, I can't watch this show. And I was like, Oh, you didn't? She's like, No, it's great. You're really good. And that's the problem. I feel like a pedophile. Like, because at the time she was like 33 and she's like, I feel like my boyfriend is a 15 year old and I can't. That's gross. So I'm sorry. I can't watch it. So then I didn't watch the last season or so because it came out while we were dating. And it felt really, for my, to use my favorite word, masturbatory, to be like, hey, Keely, Keely, I'm just going to go downstairs and watch my show by myself. <laughs> so I didn't do it. Yeah, uh, Zach, <laughs> we, uh, we, we have to let you go in a minute here because we got White Sox coming up on deck. But oh. our, our boss, Kevin, wanted to ask you this, and I have to ask you this. Are you willing, and I don't know if you saw his performance against the Dolphins this past Sunday, but Kev wants to know if you are willing to formally present the QB1 title to Bears quarterback Justin Fields because that's a title oh. that you've held for a really long time now. Well, first of all, hey, yes, I'm pumped on Justin. I think we can just, like, get the right scheme and things <laughs> to go on. He'll be great. We haven't put him in the best situation thus far. However, uh, this is a great story. Peyton Manning, um, one time Scott Porter ran into Peyton Manning and he was like, he basically was like, oh my God, I love it. And we, we, we have the offensive line over to the house every Tuesday night to watch the show and blah, blah, blah. So he was like a huge fan watching while it was on. I think it was the only problem I have with this show is I've been the starting quarterback my whole life. I've never heard the term QB1. I was always <laughs> just the quarterback. <laughs> wow. So, I'm stunned. I, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess oh maybe God. that's just a small town Texas thing. I, you know, I guess. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. that's, you know, that's Pete Berg, you know, but uh, we'll take it. Uh, but yeah, Justin, you can be QB1. You want any pointers? You can get my number somehow and uh, we'll figure this out. <laughs> awesome. uh, Zach, it's yeah. always a pleasure when you stop by and chat with us, man. We appreciate it. Follow Zach on the Twitter machine at Zach Guilford. Also, I believe you just tweeted today. About I literally, how you are now on Instagram. Scott uh <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah it's uh i think it's at zach gilford seven i have no idea how it works i'm so confused <laughs> they're like our marketing team is like put this on your story and this can be on your billboard and that's your banner and this and that and that i'm like can someone just do this for me? i'll just retweet what <laughs> may does they're like it's not twitter i'm like can i restory it can i just restory may story <laughs> i don't know how it works if anyone can help like please like just yeah. tell me i don't know it's so confusing you, you, you no, should this, have you should have somebody who does that yeah it's going to come in handy when your kids get older and you can just hand it to them and they'll do it for you yes because they can't have their own <laughs> exactly right exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> More importantly to following him on social media make sure you check out criminal minds evolution streaming mm. on paramount plus first episode drops november 24th and the new podcast, Zach Guilford has joined the family of podcast hosts. It's not only football, Friday Night Lights, and beyond, co-hosted with Scott Porter and Mae Whitman, a podcast one production that debuts on November 10th. Can't freaking wait. Uh, Man, Zach. I'm not going to be ready. Uh, so good to see you all. Will, so nice to meet you. You too, and, man. Uh, Thanks we'll for talk. coming on. No, thank you for having me. It's always fun. All right, y'all. We will be back tomorrow night for pregame before Bulls Pelicans. Until then, for Big Dave, Will, and QB1. I guess he's not QB1 anymore. Uh, oh, man. Can't I just always be? <laughs> yes. You can. Hard. Absolutely, you, yes. You can no, Justin Justin is the court. Justin's the quarterback. Well, for myself, Will Golly, Big Dave, and Matt Peck, the CHGO Bulls were out, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I, can we get a clear eyes, full hearts? Come on now. Uh, clear eyes, full hearts. Can't lose. Peace. Mm. Boom. See Red Be Good, Bulls Nation. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>